So today I'm gonna to add 20 plus yards to your golf game. How does that sound? Sounds lovely to me and I wish we could make that happen instantly for everybody. But yesterday I had a guy called Bill come in for a lesson and we did that very thing. And I wanna share with you the things I did that made a huge difference to him within minutes to his power. He increased his club head speed by nine mile an hour in one session and it didn't take that much effort. Let's go through what we did. So Bill came in and he wanted to improve his, his power, his distance, and a little bit was obviously directed around contact as well as speed, but we increased his speed by nine mile an hour. So when he came in, his golf swing, and let's see if you can resonate with this, his golf swing in the back swing, he had a flat turn and he didn't rotate too much with his rib cage here at all. And his arm swing was very, what I would call pinned. Now, I'm not going to share you with the images because I haven't got permission to do so, but his arm swing was very pinned. His right elbow was very low. His arm swing wasn't very stretched. So basically, in terms of his backswing, there was two things there straight away that stuck out to me that I could do to improve power. One is I can increase how much he's going to rotate in the backswing. Two, I can increase the width and height in his arms in order to allow his arm swing to become faster. For the length of swing he was doing, he was fairly efficient. His strike numbers even were pretty good. So he was hitting the ball about 190, 200 yards with a driver and about 81 mile an hour club head speed. So, and again, from an age perspective, we're talking late 50s. So those are his numbers. So I instantly thought we can make a difference here. We definitely could improve the confidence as well, which is obviously hopefully improve the swing speed a little bit too. From a fall through perspective, it was a little bit kind of head down, arms collapse. Not terrible, and I'm gonna exaggerate these positions far more than they were. So my initial thoughts were, okay, we need to get the flow better. We need to get the chest and rib cage working more, more in the backswing, more in the through swing. Secondly to that, I wanted to get the arms working higher. As a guide in the backswing, what I try and get players to do is get the right arm in the backswing to get this tricep parallel to the ground. And I want the arm to feel, feel fairly straight. So not bend more than 90 degrees. So his arm was bending more than 90 degrees and certainly didn't have the tricep parallel to the ground. And we didn't have a lot of rotation. And obviously then we had the fear of trying to make good contact and try and get the ball kind of in play from not playing too great for a short period in time. So all those things were up for us to challenge and change. So we started with the rotation side of things. So we got Bill basically to try and feel that in the backswing, he was gonna get his chest turning more, feel the rotation from here, allow his hips to turn a bit more, allow his knees to work a little bit more. Again, we didn't want it to be a resistant backswing. I wanted it to be a resistant free backswing. I wanted to feel that he could get mobility added from his lower half, as opposed to saying to him he had to go and do yoga or had to do stretching. So we got him just feeling, he put his hands here, turning, and as he felt he turned, let his legs and hips work more to increase that turn. And really feel that, if anything, at the top of the swing, the chest just worked up a little bit to get a little bit of extension in the back to increase the range of movement. But we definitely wanted to feel, as he did that, the shoulder worked down and across, because his shoulder was working up in a very flat plane, which wasn't helping the arm swing. As the shoulder works here, the arms wouldn't want to work up, you'd be a mile away from the golf ball. So we wanted to get him tilted and turned and stretched. So the initial thing I did with him, the initial thing I did with him, apart from just talking him through that, was told him to get a towel. And I said to him, okay, make a big backswing, slap your back, slap your back. Let's get this range of movement increasing. Get your heart to the sky. So shoulder down and across, heart to the sky, head up quicker. Don't feel he kept his head down. I wanted to feel like his head was much more on a swivel. So as a concept, I got him to swing a towel for a little bit, feel he had a bit more speed in the towel at the bottom, a bit more noise in the bottom where the pull was, but also felt that he really tried to hit his back both sides of the swing, create that bigger motion. Once we did a few towel swings, I said to him, right, okay, this is just fire a few balls and I want you to be free. I want you to feel that you're just gonna turn, hit it a bit more briskly, let your head come up earlier. Straight away from that kind of freedom and a bit more range of movement, the speed went up slightly. 
about three, four mile an hour, which I was quite happy with. You know, three, four mile an hour gain in one session. I'm pretty happy with that. So, you know, small gains are great and continual gains are great. And what we looked at was what gains could we make from a technical perspective as opposed to doing speed specific work. And that's where we started. So the second thing we did was worked on these, the arm swing, getting the arms to go up more. So we used the head cover for that. I put the head cover under his trail arm and I said to him, okay, shoulder down on the cross and as you swing arms up, I want you to drop that head cover to get that arm higher. I didn't actually want the plane to be massively higher. I wanted the shoulder to be lower so the arm plane would increase its height a little bit because the arm to shoulder plane wasn't massively bad, it was just so pinned. I wanted to feel like the arm would be away and stretched. So we got him to do this with a head cover for a few practice swings. And once he got the idea of feeling it, then we tried a couple of shots. And again, when he went to hit the balls with the head cover doing this, I wasn't worried about the contact. I took that off the table. I said to him, look, I don't care where the ball goes. Your job is really just to get your shoulder across and drop the head cover. I don't care about the fall through. This was purely about the backswing and arms. So that's exactly what he did. So he got to a ball, he swung back, shoulder down and across, dropped the head cover. And again, I hit that one heavy, but it feels really weird. But it will make my arms go up more, which is exactly what we wanted to do in terms of a drill. Then we try to piece this together then for normal swings, which is where we saw the big gain start to increase. So then all I said to him is, okay, let's keep this as simple as we possibly can. So let's go for shoulder down with a big turn. So big backswing, hit it hard and get your chest up in the finish. Ideally, the practice swings would look a little bit more kind of arm separation, arm high, shoulder down. Try and really exaggerate the feels. I definitely want all practice swings to be exaggerated feels because we won't ever do it as much as we think we're going to do it when we go to hit the golf ball. Then when he went to the golf ball, could he then turn and get the arms working a little bit more? And just feel that kind of motion, kind of heart to the sky, heart to the sky, and the arms feeling that they had a, that longer journey. Almost feel like, and you know, we even discussed a concept of thinking about the umbrella move, which you might well have seen before on my channel and other people's channels. If you were holding an umbrella atop the backswing, how your wrist would be less cocked, your arms would be less collapsed. You'd have the height to hold the body above your head and walk down the street. And those kind of concepts are the things that really resonated with him. And I hope they resonate, resonate with you so you can go to the golf swing and make sure you check that trail arm. Is that trail arm too low? Is your shoulder tilt too flat? Are you turning your rib cage enough? Because these things, if you're not doing them, are distance killers. We need to make sure you're maximizing your opportunity to get the most distance without getting in the gym, without stretching like crazy. Obviously, if you do those things on top or any overspeed work on top, it'll, it will increase further. And that's where we're going to go with Bill a little bit. Not so much the stretching, but we're definitely going to do some speed training with him in certain exercises. Once he's got used to getting this arm swing and shoulder turn and rib cage turn a little bit more increased. Once he's done that, then we'll do some speed work to see if we can get him up a few more mile an hour.